That has 11. We'll keep the roll open for absent members. One more time, S Senator. 986. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, SB 986 simply makes sure the punishment fits the crime. It reduces the fine for a rolling right-hand turn at a stoplight. Currently, when a driver does not come to a complete stop at a red light, when making a right-hand turn and does what is commonly called a California stop, that driver could be facing a ticket of over $500. Second. Thank you very much. I respectfully ask for an I vote, members. Next witness, please. Uh, Mr. Chair and members, uh, Tim Chang with the Auto Club of Southern California. Uh, this, is, this bill has been a long time in coming. Uh, Senator, uh, Senator Hill, then Assemblyman Hill, took a, a run at this bill back in 2010. We have historically gotten a lot of inquiries from our members uh, inquiring about the, the high nature of the fine for this type of violation. Uh, we are, we're here to strongly support this bill and urge your I vote. Next witness, please. Mike Carpenter, AAA, Northern California, Nevada, and Utah. Concur in Mr. Chang's remarks. Uh, simply put, a rolling right turn doesn't present the same dangers as blowing a red light and to have equivalent fines is excessive and unwarranted. We ask for your I vote. Thank you, Mike. Any other witnesses in uh, support of the author's bill? Here we go. Please state your name and who you're representing, please. Allie Fletcher with the ACLU of California in support. Thank you. Any members of the public that would like to testify in opposition of the author's bill? Please state your name and who you represent, please. Mr. Chair, members, Joshua Shaw for the city and county of San Francisco's Mayor Ed Lee and our San Francisco Municipal Transportation Agency in opposition. We, uh, unfortunately, uh, so we love working with the senator. On this one, we think it sends the wrong signal. The, the mayor, our transportation agency, the board of supervisors, other officials in the city and county have adopted a policy supporting Vision Zero, which means reducing to zero by 2024 any incidences of behavior that can do or could result in car on uh, bicyclists or car on pedestrian accidents. Uh, we have over 300 uh, red light running incidences a year, about 10% of which are these right turns, some of which can uh, injure people or kill people. Unfortunately, we think this sends the wrong signal. The law is stop at the red light, period, and we think the, the penalty is uh, calibrated appropriately. We would urge your no vote. Thank you. Thank you. Next witness, please. Jeannie Wardwaller with the California Bicycle Coalition, also here on behalf of Walk San Francisco and California Walks, who we work closely with. Um, uh, agree with Mr. Shaw that um, we, we don't believe that these are less dangerous to the public, particularly to pedestrians and bicyclists. These can be extremely dangerous maneuvers, and so it sends the wrong signal to reduce these fines. We also want to just comment on the risk, particularly to low-income folks. They tend to be walking and biking more and um, be at greater risk of being killed or injured on our roads. Roads. And so reducing the fines may re reduce the financial burden, but it puts them more at risk um, of being killed or maimed on our streets. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public that would like to testify in opposition to the bill? Seeing none, any questions of the committee of the author? Mr. Dodd. Yes, Senator. I'm wondering if you've done any analysis or heard since you've been uh, running this bill about insurance uh, uh, you know, companies and what their position would be on this, because I think there still is uh, – it's, it's a violation. It's a moving violation. And so uh, the insurance companies probably will still charge more for insurance rates as oh, wait, a violation. And if I may, Mr. Chair, there, there's been no, no difference. It still is one point on your driving right. record. Still raise your insurance. If you, you, so know, there if are you don't go to traffic school, you can do those things. And everything remains the same. The, the, the problem I have is putting people more at risk. How that affects is when I come to a stoplight or stop sign, and I'm going to make that rolling right turn. Am I thinking in my head, is this a $550 fine or is this a $290? And is that the determinant factor as to whether I'm going to make that rolling right or not? No. Most people don't know that it's a, what the fine is. They know it's a violation of law. They know they're going to get a ticket. They know it's going to be a point on their drive, traffic, driving record. And they know they may have to go to traffic school if they want. The fine is immaterial to that. But what this does is bring the fine in line with the violation. To give you some examples, if you run a red light straight through or uh, if your speed over 25 miles per hour over the speed limit on the freeway failed to yield to an emergency vehicle or going around a closed railroad crossings, that is the same fine that we're talking about today for making a rolling right. If you come to a stop light or stop sign and you, make a, you look and you make that turn, but you almost hit a pedestrian or you 
cut a car off, that fine is $35. It's half as much as what we're going to establish this one. So there's no relation to putting someone in harm's way. There's no relationship to anyone being in greater risk or danger because of this. The fine really is now more appropriate. And in 1998, when this was first determined, when the fine was doubled, to go straight through a red light, it in inadvertently included the rolling right in that. And what this is doing is cl clearing that up. There have been statements from the transportation uh, consultant at the time that clearly states that the chair of the Judiciary Committee in the Senate said, you have to make sure that this stays at the regular rate and is not increased as this one should be. So we're just bringing this in line to what would make it correct. Right now, a $70 ticket, which is the a little less than what this one is, if you drive the wrong way on a one-way street or driving on the sidewalk. Those are less fines today than if you make the slight rolling right-hand turn. So I think this is a fair. My concern, what really raised this to my attention, was so many of my constituents get the ticket, the citation, $550, and their complaint to me is that's a third of my take-home pay. How can I exist? I respectfully ask your night, but members, thank you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, thank you for bringing this bill to our committee today. Uh, we do have a first from uh, Mr. Chu and a second from Mr. Mathis. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Well, I, I don't con condone rolling the red lights on the right turns. Um, these maneuvers are nowhere near as dangerous as running, a, running straight through a red light, as you know. Uh, giving the a rolling right turn is still amount to close to $300 plus the point plus any of the uh, additional fees by the insurance companies. Uh, that are assessed, I think we still get the point across uh, that these maneuvers are not safe or encouraged by this bill. But it does give the ability for people to, uh, they do make a mistake uh, not to, to swallow their weekly pay. So with that, I'll be supporting your bill. Thank you. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. The motion is due passed to the Assembly Appropriations Committee. Frazier? Aye. Frazier, aye. Linder? Aye. Linder, aye. Baker? Aye. Baker, aye. Bloom? Brown, Chu, aye. Chu I Daly, Dodd, aye. Dodd I Eduardo Garcia, aye. Eduardo Garcia I Gomez, Kim, aye. Kim I Mathis, aye. Mathis I Medina, Melendez, aye. Melendez I Nazarian, O'Donnell, aye. O'Donnell I. That is that bill has ten. We'll leave it up. Roll open for absent members. Thank, Thank you, you, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, members, for your indulgence today. And vote. Not just a marathon. <laughs> Assemblymember Gibson, please uh, make your way up to the podium. ACR 178, Mr. Gibson. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members. Thank you for uh, allowing me to present um, Resolution 178. I want to start off by um, thanking the staff and working very closely with us. I will be accepting the amendments that's offered by the staff to certainly strengthen this resolution. Assembly Concurrence Resolution 178 seeks to pay tribute to three fallen officers from the city of Compton, which I represent, by having a sign erected <clears throat> on local highways in honor of their service. The, 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 uh, the fallen officers are Kevin Burrell, James McDonald, who were all fatally killed in 1993 um, at a traffic stop um, in the city of Compton. And the third is Desmond, Desmond K. Phillips, who was also killed um, in a high-speed chase in 1962. We would like to honor these men not only as officers who died while committing themselves to public safety and peace, but also as officers who are uniquely part of the city of Compton's histories, having served um, when the city of Compton had its own police department. And I also want to indicate uh, myself as a former police officer who partner was killed in 1992, and this happened in 1993. I think this is certainly a good resolution to honor those individuals who've provided uh, not only public safety, but also peace in our community. Um, here with me to provide supporting testimonies, Officer Frederick Reynolds from the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department and Mr. Mal Asagai with the city of Compton. And I respectfully ask for your eye vote. Move the bill. 
Thank you very much. Please state your name and who you're representing, please. My name is Frederick Douglas Reynolds. I am a sergeant for the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Uh, prior to that, I was a police officer for the Compton Police Department. I was a police officer for the city of Compton for 15 years. I have been a deputy sheriff for the LA County Sheriff's Department for 16 years. Collectively, I have 31 years of law enforcement. In 1962, I was one year old, one years old when Officer Des Phipps was killed during a traffic collision. In 1993, I was working the night that Officers Burrell and McDonald were murdered. I responded to the scene. I handled the scene. I saw them uh, dead in the streets. I've carried that with me since 1993. Uh, I took it upon myself to uh, contact Mr. Gibson's office to see if we can get some kind of recognition for these officers because the Compton Police Department no longer exists. And I don't want these officers' names to fade into memory because the department is no longer here. Um, I thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, and I thank uh, Mr. Gibson for bringing this bill forward. Thank you. Next witness, please. Well, Mr. Yeah, Chairman, members, uh, Mel Osagai for the city of Compton and Mayor Pro Tem, uh, Jana Zarita. Uh, we want to thank the author for bringing this forward. We think it's a resolution that honors, properly honors law enforcement at its best. We are dry vote. Any other witnesses in support? Seeing none, any witnesses in opposition to the ACR? Seeing none, any questions of the committee of the author? Mr. Gibson, would you like to close? Thank you very much, Mr. Members and Mr. Chair. I respectfully ask for your eye vote. Thank you, Mr. Gibson. What we will do also is your amendments will be taken in appropriations. And, uh, but I understand the boundaries of each name segment will be added in the bill when it is heard in the Assembly Appropriations Committee also, uh, supporting the amendments. And so I will be uh, you. supporting your bill and thank you very much for honoring these folks. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Madam Chairman. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. A motion from Mr. Mathis and a second from Mr. Chu. Madam Secretary. Thank you. The motion is be adopted to the Assembly Appropriations Committee. Frazier? Aye. Frazier, aye. Linder? Aye. Linder, aye. Baker? Bloom? Brown? Chu? Aye. Chu, aye. Daly? Dodd? Aye. Dodd, aye. Eduardo Garcia? Aye. Eduardo Garcia, aye. Gomez? Kim? Mathis? Aye. Mathis, aye. Medina? Melendez? Melendez, aye. Nazarian, O'Donnell. Aye. O'Donnell, aye. That has eight and needs one more, but uh, we'll leave the roll open for absent members. Again, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dodd, will you please present yourself at the podium? Mr. Dodge, you'll be presenting Assembly Joint Re Resolution 42. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. And committee members, AJR 42 urges federal agencies to expedite the rulemaking and implementation of safety regulations for the transportation of volatile liquids by rail. In the past decade, there has been a tremendous increase in the transportation of crude oil by rail cars. There are several pending plans in the state, including one to ship up to 70,000 barrels of crude oil per day throughout Northern California. A recent environmental impact report conducted in Northern California concluded that such trains present significant risk of oil spills, environmental damage, and potential loss of human life if any cars were to derail. The state recently passed enhanced emergency response legislation. However, federal preemption prevents states and local jurisdictions from taking action to require specific rail safety protocols, which are critical to stop a disaster before it starts. This resolution urges the federal government to expedite rulemaking and implementation for federal safety regulations governing transport by rail of volatile liquids, including crude oil. 16 million Americans live alongside rail lines, including tens of thousands of people in my district alone. It is our responsibility as legislators to say we have taken every step to ensure the safety of our local communities. 
With me here in support, uh, Mr. Chair, are uh, good friends of mine, actually, Solano County Supervisor Linda uh, Seifert and Yolo uh, Committee, excuse me, Yolo County Supervisor Don Saylor, both I've served uh, in the past as a county supervisor with. Uh, Don also is the immediate past chair of the Sacramento Area Council of Governments. So your first witness, please state your name and who you represent, please. Hi. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. My name is Supervisor Linda Seifert, and I have been a supervisor in Solano County for the past eight years. Uh, I understand that the um, state has little ability because of the Commerce Clause to enact uh, strong measures to uh, address the safety of, of uh, rail transport of crude uh, materials. Uh, I have to say thank you to our congressman um, in our area who met several year, met, met a couple about a year ago to address this issue and begin to identify um, areas and ways in which uh, safety measures could be enacted. They need uh, your support, and a resolution like this to Washington will go will be one step um, in the absolute right direction. In my area alone, we are currently faced with a effort to bring crude by rail, which will go through uh, many counties uh, next to homes, next to a courthouse, next to schools, and across the Sassoon Marsh. It's absolutely essential that we look to figure out ways to address and to ensure safety not only of the people, um, but of buildings, and also uh, to protect our environment. And so I would urge your support for this resolution. Next witness, please state your name and who you represent, please. Mr. Chairman and members, my name is Don Saylor. I'm a county supervisor in Yolo County, and I've been the chair of the Sacramento Area Council of Governments uh, during 2015. Uh, the SACOG is a metropolitan planning organization comprising six counties and 22 cities. About a year ago, I guess it was in August 2014, we began our, our engagement on the issues regarding crude oil by rail. We commented on draft environmental impact reports on multiple occasions, and we also submitted comments on the, the rail car safety standards that the federal government was, was considering. The reason that we've been engaged in this issue is, and by the way, this is 31 member board, and we've been unanimous in, in our engagement on this. That's a very unusual circumstance, as I'm sure you would understand. Uh, we are engaged because within one quarter mile of the rail lines that are most likely for crude oil to be shipped through our region, through the six county region, live 260,000 people within what's described as the potential blast zone. In addition, 204,000 people work there, 42 health facilities are located in this area, and 67 schools. And when you think about the recent incident on June 3rd in Mosher, Oregon, in the Columbia River Gorge, you'll understand why there's a concern about public safety. The reason that we're unanimous in our concern is that we are concerned about public safety, not about the economic value of the shipments. So we do support AJR 42. We are committed to the, to the issues that Mr. Dodd has identified to accelerate the transition to safe cars, to assure that the cars have positive train control, uh, that, the rail, that there are rails inspected on a regular basis, and that there is a stabilization at the source. In Mosher, Oregon, I think you, you've been following that, you'll see that there was a, a, an incident that caused the closure of their wastewater treatment facility, the exhaustion of their water supply, uh, the closure of an elementary school, the, the cancellation of the last year of school, and closure of Interstate 84 for 14 mile period, uh, segment. So this is a critical issue for public safety in, throughout our state, and we urge uh, your, your support of Mr. Dodd's resolution. Thank you, sir. Any other members of the public that would like to testify in support of the author's bill? Seeing none, any members of the public that would like to testify in opposition to the author's bill? That being seen, any members of the committee would like to ask questions of the author or witnesses? Seeing none, Mr. Dodd, would you like to close? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. The resolution is supported by the California State Association of Counties, the Solano County Board of Supervisors, and the City of Davis, to name a few. Uh, while it's important to here to my district, this is important to many districts uh, throughout the state of California. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Dodd. We do have a motion by uh, Mr. Chu and a second by Assemblymember Melendez. Um, 
I will I want to thank the witnesses from Solano and Yolo for coming out. They're both world famous locally. And uh, <laughs> and I would just like to acknowledge that uh, working with both of you has been a pleasure throughout my political career. Um, Mr. Dodd, I wish you the best of luck uh, getting the president or Congress to do anything quickly. Um, good luck. Uh, and on that note, I'll be able to uh, support your AGR. Uh, please, Madam Secretary, call the roll. The motion is be adopted. Frazier? Aye. Frazier, aye. Linder? Aye. Linder, aye. Baker? Bloom? Aye. Bloom, aye. Brown? Chu? Aye. Chu, aye. Daly? Dodd? Aye. Dodd, aye. Eduardo Garcia? Aye. Eduardo Garcia, aye. Gomez? Kim? Mathis? Not voting. Mathis, not voting. Medina? Melendez? Melendez, aye. Nazarian? O'Donnell? O'Donnell, aye. That has eight. We'll need one more. We'll leave the roll open for absent members. Again, thank you very much for coming up today. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members. Senator Glazier. Senate Bill 1128. Please proceed when you're ready, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. Pleased to present with, uh, you with SB 1128, a bill that would eliminate the sunset date on a proven commuter benefit pilot program. Uh, this bill would authorize the continuation of the existing program, which requires Bay Area employers of 50 or more employees to offer some form of commuter benefit. According to the Joint Metropolitan Transportation Commission and the Bay Area Air Quality Management District report, this program has been successful in reducing vehicle trips, greenhouse gas emissions, and air pollution, while having significant economic benefits for employees and employers. The bill enjoys bipartisan co-authors, support from both environmental and business groups, has no known opposition, and has received no no votes. For those reasons, I would respectfully ask for your I vote, joined here by Two experts in this area, Tom Addison of the Bay Area Air Quality Management District and Rebecca Long of the Metropolitan Transportation Commission to answer any questions. If you have comments, we have a motion by Mr. Chu. Mr. Bloom has a second. Sir, would you like to proceed? Uh, Tom Addison with the Bay Area Air Quality Management District here uh, to, in, in strong support. I just leave you with, with two numbers. 86 million fewer miles were driven in the Bay Area last year as a direct result of this program, and 36,000 fewer tons of CO2 emissions uh, were produced as a direct result of this program last year. Thank you, ma'am. Objective? We're good. That'll be a third. Nothing to add. That'll be a third. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I really, I have nothing to add. Um, I think my colleague and Senator Glazer have really laid it out. So we ask for your I vote. Thank you. Steve Wall, on behalf of the, the Alameda uh, County Transportation Commission, AC Transit, uh, the Napa Valley Transportation Authority, and Cal Act, all in support. Thank you. Gus Coyne, on behalf of the San Mateo County Transportation Authority and Transportation Authority Marin, in support. Uh, Michael Radigan, on behalf of the Board of Supervisors, Santa Clara County, in support. Matt Robinson on behalf of the California Transit Association in support. Michael Pimentel here on behalf of Solano Transportation Authority, Solano County Transit, San Mateo County Transit District, and Caltrain. Ask for your I vote. Josh Shaw for City and County of San Francisco's Mayor Ed Lee and the San Francisco Municipal Transportation Agency in support. Uh, Mr. Chair and members, Tim Schott on behalf of the San Francisco Bay Area Rapid Transit District in support. Thank you. Any other members of the public that would like to testify in support of the author's bill? Seeing none, any members of the public that would like to uh, testify in opposition to the author's bill? Seeing none, any members of the committee have questions of the author? Seeing none, Senator, would you like to close? Respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator. Glazier uh, will be supporting your bill today. The Bay Area Commuter Benefit Program has been successful in moving people from driving alone and, uh, and to work toward transit, um, van pools and carpools, all while saving money, is a win-win-win for employers, employees, and the environment. I'll be voting on the bill today. Madam Secretary, will you please call the roll? The motion is due pass. Frazier? Aye. Frazier, aye. Linder? Aye. Linder, aye. Baker? Bloom? Aye. Bloom, aye. Brown? Chu? Aye. Chu, aye. Daly? Dodd? Dodd, aye. Eduardo Garcia? Aye. Eduardo Garcia, aye. Gomez? 
Kim, Mathis, Medina, Melendez, Melendez I, Nazarian, O'Donnell. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Rebecca. Appreciate it. That bill has seven. We'll leave the roll open for absent members. Senator Glazier, would you like to proceed with Senate Bill 1311? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. 1311, it's a bill relating to license plate confidentiality. A certain class of public employees, such as judges, public sector attorneys, peace officers, local elected officials, and their spouses and children have their home addresses shielded from inspection for their own protection. This shielding of information occurs when a peace officer runs a person's license plate in a typically routine traffic stop. SB 1311 will simply remove from this database any spouse or child that has been convicted of a felony. This will take away that confidentiality protection and will provide enhanced protection and safety for our peace officers. Uh, there's no known opposition. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. I'm joined by Corey Salzillo of the uh, California State Sheriff's Association to answer any questions. Go ahead and proceed, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon. Corey Salzillo on behalf of the California State Sheriff's Association. We're the sponsors of the bill. Uh, as Senator Glazer described the bill, uh, there is no mechanism under current law to remove the child or spouse of a protected employee from this protection if he or she is convicted of a felony. Um, there is a similar provision uh, that when an employee who is covered by this section uh, is terminated because of a criminal conviction that they are removed, this creates an analogous uh, mechanism to remove such a person. And so uh, there's no opposition to Bill, and we ask for your vote. So I have a first by Assemblymember Dawes, second by Assemblymember Linder. Any other members of the public that would like to testify in support of the author's bill? Seeing none. Any members of the public that would like to testify in opposition to the author's bill? Questions of the committee, of the author? Senator, would you like to close? Respectfully ask for an aye vote. Thank you. Thank you, Senator, for bringing this uh, bill forward. We should always make sure that our law enforcement have all the tools that they need to be effective, and I will be supporting the bill. Um, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. The motion is due passed to the Assembly Appropriations Committee. Frazier? Aye. Frazier, aye. Linder? Aye. Linder, aye. Baker? Bloom? Aye. Bloom, aye. Brown? Chu? Aye. Chu, aye. Daly? Dodd? Aye. Dodd, aye. Eduardo Garcia? Aye. Eduardo Garcia, aye. Gomez? Kim, Mathis, Medina, Melendez, Melendez I, Nazarian, Thank you. O'Donnell. That has seven. We'll leave the roll open for absent members. Um, thank, you, thank you, Senator. Thank you. Assembly Member Bonta. <laughs> Assembly Member, you'll be presenting Assembly Bill 1432? Yes, Mr. Chair. Please proceed when you're ready. As recently amended in the Senate, AB 1432 enacts a four-year navigation technology surcharge beginning January 1, 2017 until January 1, 2021. And this bill represents several months of hard work and negotiations by uh, my office, the San Francisco Bar Pilots, and the Pacific Merchant Sip Shipping Association, PMSA. These amendments remove all opposition to the bill. And this navigation technology surcharge covers the cost of acquiring more advanced electronic navigation systems that assist the bar pilots in carrying out their duties, including specialized navigation equipment used to maneuver the new class of ultra-large container vessels. This charge is consistent with the Board of Pilot Commissioners' original recommendation and enjoys the support of multiple parties and stakeholders. Under current law, in order for this surcharge to take effect, there must be legislative action to ratify the change, which is why we're here today. Uh, with me today, I have Captain Pete McIsaac of the San Francisco Bar Pilots and Mike Jacob from PMSA. We have a first from Assemblymember Chu and a second from Assemblymember Dodd. Uh, Dodd. Captain, would you like to proceed? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Chairman Frazier and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Captain Peter McIsaac, President and Port Agent of San Francisco Bar Pilots. I'd like to thank Mr. Bont and his staff for continued work on this issue. Uh, this surcharge is one uh, on which uh, there has been consistent agreement among industry, the pilots, and regulators, and was one of the recommendations of the Board of Pilot Commissioners. For the last 20 years or so, industry has preferred to fund capital improvements and equipment with a surcharge rather than simply raising the rate. 
a similar provision had been in effect in, in 2009 until it sunset it in January 2011. Thus, the procedures and safeguards are familiar to most concerned. Vessels calling on the San Francisco Bay Area ports have increased dramatically in size since the sunset of that earlier provision and navigation technology has become more sophisticated. Thank you, and I'm happy to answer any questions of the committee. Next witness, please. Right. Thank you. I'm Mike Jacob with PMSA in support of the bill. Um, we've spent the better part of, of 18 months uh, in conversations off and on with the bar pilots, um, and one of the things that we've had consistent agreement on is, is trying to fund the next generation of navigation technology and the way that the surcharge is laid out. It's, it's limited in terms of total scope. It has a new sunset date. Um, and it's directed towards the actual purposes for which it's going to be applied. We support all that. And I'd also like to thank uh, Mr. Bonta um, for his personal work on this, and including time last summer um, in the district office after hours on his wife's birthday <laughs> for marathon meetings, um, which unfortunately didn't come to resolution on more issues, but we do have consensus and resolution on this issue. So thank you very much. Thank you. Next witness, please. Say your name, who you represent, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members. Doug Subers on behalf of the Western States Petroleum Association in support. Thank you. Michael Young, on behalf of the California Labor Federation, also here in support. Thank you. Any other witnesses of the public that are wanting to testify in support of the author's bill? Seeing none, any members of the public that would like to testify in opposition to the author's bill? Seeing none, members of the committee, questions of the author or witnesses? Mr. Bonto, would you like to close? Thank you, Mr. Chair and colleagues, for your consideration. This bill represents an important area of agreement between the industry and the bar pilots, and I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Bonta, for bringing this bill to our committee, and I look forward to you and I going out 11 miles and uh, boarding a ship and seeing how all this technology works together. Uh, this bill makes a lot of, s of sense, and I intend to support it today. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. The recommendation is to concur in Senate amendments. Fraser. Aye. Fraser I. Linder. Aye. Linder I. Baker. Aye. Baker I. Bloom. Aye. Bloom I. Brown. Chu. Aye. Chu I. Daly. Dodd. Aye. Dodd I. Eduardo Garcia. Aye. Eduardo Garcia I. Gomez. Kim. Mathis. Medina. Melendez. Aye. Melendez I. Nazarian. O'Donnell. That bill has eight. We'll keep the roll open for absent members. Thank you for uh, showing up today, witnesses. Thank you, Mr. Chair, colleagues, and staff. Senator Berryhill. Senate Bill 1345. Please proceed when you're ready, sir. Uh, 